usually I go around the city and talk to a lot of the, the people, and I'm always told by people that they watch the Common Council meetings all the time. So we're obviously a good show. We have a strong, the people have a strong interest in the Common Council. But there's one in particular that always says that's Mr. John Vandermeil. So I'd like to extend a hi to John Vandermeil because he's watching right now. So hopefully, we'll, hopefully he'll enjoy tonight's Common Council meeting. Call the 24th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call roll. Boren. Here. Falk. Here. Gisha. Excuse. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Kleunis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Smith. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Excuse. And Wangaman. Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. I may point out that I received a call from Alderman Verhasselt about an hour ago saying that he was still at the airport. He may or may not make it. I did ask him that if he did make it, to just please come in and take his seat. Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight we have uh, a young man, Eric Gregory Feudner, who is age 13 from Troop Number 818, who will lead us in the pledge as part of his uh, responsibilities for earning a merit badge. Eric. There's a flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the last meeting. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the minutes be approved. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next item is confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Bill Grinke to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Mary Morande, whose term expires 9-10-2010, signed by the Mayor. And I need a motion to confirm. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve. Second. Motion to second to confirm. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. Thank you. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Thank you. First on the list would be Henry Capitillo. Henry, if you could step up to the mic, please. And can I get your home address, Henry? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. All right, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to come before this council to speak on a very important issue, the city of Sheboygan financial situation. One thing that Sheboygan has in common with the state of Wisconsin and the U.S. government is that it is struggling to get its financial house in order. All three of these entities are presently spending more money than they have. To make up for their lack of revenue, they raid different sources of money. The U.S. raids the Social Security Fund. The state of Wisconsin raids the Transportation Fund. And the city of Sheboygan raids the Vehicle Maintenance Fund. Wisconsin Assembly Speaker Mike Habish said it, it all in the March 14, 2008 Milwaukee Journal Sentinel Metro News article, I quote, we understand the problem is we're spending too much money. How simple and to the point it is, we are spending too much money. Another thing that all of these entities have in common is their inability to make the tough decisions to cut spending instead of looking to raid other sources of money to balance their budgets. In order to hold down spending, this council has to be consistent when dealing with their spending habits. Do not always approve money for certain departments and consistently deny other departments. Start making a difference in small areas such as salaries. Did you know that the city assessor's starting salary was $56,972 annually? Do you know that the city assessor was hired in June of 2007 and he is presently earning $72,368, a difference of $15,396 from the starting salary? I quote the mayor from the Sheboygan Press Saturday, March news article, judge's salary to be before the council. I treat everyone as fair as I can. I possibly can. 
Perez said, when I see an individual who is asking for almost a 100% increase in their salary, when they knew full well what the salary was, then when they ran for the office, it's not an easy decision for me to support. It is understandable that the judge is asking for more money when a person who is working less than one year is earning $15,396 more than their starting salary. When one city employee sees how another city employee is hired and gets $15,396 within less than one year, how can you expect them to not want more money if they are doing a considerably a lot more money than when they started? I quote the mayor again, I treat everybody as fair as I possibly can. I would rather have the mayor saying, we try to be consistent with our hiring salaries and wage increases. By being consistent in hiring city employees, all at slightly or above the salary range, you have plenty of future increase margins. I quote the mayor again, when I see an individual who is asking for an increase, almost 100% increase in their salary, then they knew when what the salary was than when they ran for the office. I would venture to say that the city, the city assessor also knew exactly what the starting salary was, $56,972 annually when he applied for the job. If he applied for the job, then apparently he was willing to work for the salary of $56,972. I think that the city already has enough lawsuits pending that they do not need any more. How can you justify this kind of inconsistent policy and expect it to make sense? Look at the IT director position. The mayor offered Tugare a starting salary of $79,000. In a letter or email to Ms. Tugare from Susan Hart saying, our current pay plan would provide you with a raise at the end of six months probationary period. The salary structure for 2008 has not been approved, but I would anticipate at the end of your probationary period, your salary would go to $81,762. In January 2009, you, you would see both an, an across the board and merit increase that if Mir's previous years would take your salary to approximately $86,936. So your salary would increase nearly $8,000 in 13 months. She further goes on to say, please remember the city pays 12.2% of your gross salary into the state retirement. According to my calculations, that would be $10,606 annually. Not bad since the city of Sheboygan has so much money that they can afford to do with what they have. I now hear that the council is also looking to increase the mayor's salary. How much will this salary go up? $15,000, $20,000? I also hear that the Department of Public Works is also looking to hire six new people and that the money to pay these individuals is not even in the public works budget. How can you look to approve the hiring of six new workers and not even have the money in your budget to do so? Remember when senior President Bush was accused of using voodoo economics? Apparently that is what is being used in the city of Sheboygan. I do not have an opinion on whether a city employee should or should not get a pay increase, but one thing I can tell you is to be consistent and fair in all in dealing with all city departments and when it comes to setting salaries and wage increase. If you are going to hold the line on spending... Excuse me, be, Henry, would you like your extra minute? Yes. Excuse me, thank you. If you're going to hold the line on spending, then be consistent and say no to every city department who wants to spend more than what is in their budget. I can remember when I came before this council and asked for you to look at the police department budget. Apparently some of you did not have a problem saying no to the police department. In closing, I would like to compliment the older persons who voted not to give themselves a raise. And this, this is the kind of leadership that is needed during these tough economic times that all cities find themselves in. Contrary to some opinion, you can attract good, educated, intelligent individuals to run for city council positions. You can attract people like Ed Surik, who has a master's degree in business administration, numerous years of experience in the private sector, and eight years of employment with the city of Sheboygan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alderman, uh, <clears throat> I would say to the public also that anyone can stand up here and say what they want, and they're free to make their conclusions. Uh, but some conclusions can be arrived at with the wrong data or not enough data. Um, and also, uh, Mr. Capitillo, in the future, uh, pol politicking for candidates is not allowed in the public forum, as you just did uh, indirectly. That would really be appreciated. I think everyone's aware of the candidates. That's not necessary. 
we are happy that you're able to share your opinions with us. Um, and if you need information to, to, uh, to make sure that you have everything that you need, please feel free to call my office. You haven't yet once in all three years. And I'll be glad to give you the correct information uh, so that you can arrive at the right conclusions. Thank you. Next. Steve Magistro. And Steve, could you give us your home address, please? 580 Yulio, it's U L A O Road, Grafton, Wisconsin. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for listening to me. My name is Steve Magistro with Mad Max Incorporated. We purchased a property back in October on 14th and Illinois, which was a quality state oil uh, gas station convenience store. Uh, since we purchased that location, I've talked with community development, lawn licensing, uh, both community development uh, and lawn licensing have already looked at our preliminary drawings for that site. It's going to be a raise and rebuild of approximately a 6,000 square foot building. Uh, I believe tonight you will be looking at something from lawn licensing for a change in the policy to help us rebuild that location and beautify uh, 14th in Illinois. Uh, I just wanted to present myself to you, introduce myself to you, and hope uh, that you'll uh, support what we'd like to do on that site. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And last on our list would be Janice Maxwell. Is Janice here? Oh, actually, Susan's here with me. Oh, okay. So okay. we're just doing you. <laughs> okay. okay. That's it then. Thank you very much, Madam City Clerk, and thank you to uh, both individuals that addressed the council tonight. Next item on the agenda is a consent agenda. Items 24-1 to 24-27, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and that all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Boren. Aye. Bauk, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Kleinus, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Wangeman. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions. Alderman Meyer? I'll let you continue. I wanted to address that one. Uh, communications and petitions. To be referred, 2428, Alden Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to make a motion to file this communication. Second. Motion and second to file 2428. Under discussion? Um, yes, Your Honor. Under discussion, um, these issues have been addressed, and we are also moving into a very gray area when we're discussing people's personal health issues. We are treading on the HIPAA laws, and I think um, we should just file this right now. Thank you. Any further discussion? Motion to file. Alderman Fair. Alderman Rentleis. No, thank you, Mr. Uh, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'd like clarification from the city attorney, to, to, who are probably more familiar with the HIPAA laws than, than we are. Uh, is it something that, uh, in the act of, of providing customer service, we need to look at, or is it something that we really need to not even look at because of the the, the, the uh, protections of the Privacy Act and the HIPAA Act? Attorney McLean. Uh, I don't know that HIPAA would be a concern. Uh, Mr. Hutz is submitting concerns about the, the plan uh, to the council you know, publicly. He's the one asking for the review. It's not to say you have to send it to any committee, uh, but uh, uh, to, the, to the extent uh, he or the committee were to discuss uh, personal health issues, either he would uh, be able to waive his right to privacy if he's willing to do that, or it could be discussed in closed session if uh, the committee was desirous of hearing what he had to say. Um, so I don't see that you couldn't send it to the committee and discuss it, but you certainly don't have to. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Bout. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Holtz brings up some pretty significant concerns, 
And I, if we can get around the privacy issues, I just, it would be a question for the chairman of that committee if that, if that chairman thinks it's important to, to discuss these things in a, in a public forum. I, I, I think that it should not be filed. I suspect that it probably should be forwarded if we can get around privacy. And he brings up some pretty significant concerns in here, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think that from what I recall, a lot of those issues have been resolved too, but oh, Vice, Vice, Vice President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hutz are constituents of mine, and before I, re before I sent this on, uh, I, I suggested uh, referring it to the uh, Group Health Committee, and he was fine with that. So I'm just following uh, my constituents' wishes by forwarding this to the committee, and I think it would be a good opportunity for Mr. and Mrs. Hutz and other city employees uh, at the next Group Health Meeting, which I guess is maybe next week, to come in and cover these issues because it's been a rough transition from uh, Humana to right source. So I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be voting not to file. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I concur with both uh, Alderman Bauck and uh, Alderman Boren. Uh, if Mr. Hutz wants this discussed in committee and if he's consented to this, I believe it should uh, be so. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to say to everybody here, these issues have all been addressed at every department. Humana has been there with representatives every week to talk to employees. The retired employees have also been instructed to contact Susan Hart with issues and also to contact Humana. Um, I just don't see the need to continue talking about this at, at any kind of committees. We've been discussing this for months already. These issues have been addressed and I would, would think Mr. Hutz would care to talk to Humana or Ms. Susan Hart, and he would, all this stuff would be clarified. Okay. Um, President Hanna, is that your recollection? Oh. You might, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I, I received the email from Mr. Hutz also. I think the vast majority of his issues have been addressed by Susan Hart and by Humana. Um, if, if you want to refer to my committee, I'd be Happy to just put it on my agenda, address it again. But most of them have been, I think. <clears throat> Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I would just like to say, too, why not just refer it to the Group Health Insurance Committee, let those issues be talked about there, too. And if they are resolved, all the better, and, uh, you know, then we can go on from there. But uh, I think Mr. Hutz should be able to be heard and uh, make sure that those issues are cleared up. Thank you. Alderman Wangman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I can't really see any uh, reason why we shouldn't refer it on to the committee. Even if these questions have already been answered, then it shouldn't take them very long to solve this. And I, I, I guess I would like to see it brought before this uh, uh, insurance group so that it can be looked into more thoroughly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more? On the motion to file. Please call. An I vote would be to file. Everybody understand that? Um, Bulk. Hannah? No. I'm sorry. No. Thank you. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? No. Kleunis? No. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? No. Smith? No. Vanderweel? No. And Wangaman? No. Two eyes, 12 no's. Motion fails. We'll be. I, uh, I, I'm changing your last name. I always do this. Uh, Alderman Boren. No. Thank you. I'm so sorry. But you had your vote I did have your vote down. Yes, I did. How did I know that? So we're sending this to Group Health then? Thank it, you. It's listed. Motion to uh, motion fails 2428 will be referred to Group Health Insurance. Report of <laughs> Officer 2, 2429 lies over to May 5th, 2430 to 2449 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 2450 by Alderman Hanna, authorizing intern into a contract to produce and perform a pyrotechnic display on Independence Day. All President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to ask for the rules to be suspended because if we contract with them in a timely fashion, uh, we'll receive a 5% discount. So I'd make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Is is there any objection to the motion to suspend? Then just proceed with a motion to uh, pass the resolution. <clears throat>
Mr. Mayor, I would make a motion to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 2450 upon its passage. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. <laughs> Both. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2451 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Gisha, and Bauk authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for donations received for Police Department Junior Police Academy and establishing appropriation for financial management information system from information technology, unreserved, retained earnings. Oh, President Hannah. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm gonna also make a motion to suspend the rules on this, but first, I wanted to explain that if we uh, contract with the software company in a timely fashion, i.e. before the end of this month, we'll receive a $45,000 discount to the price. So it is, uh, there's consent that we want to move ahead with this software provider, and if we can move in a timely fashion, there's significant dollars to be saved. So I'd make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion and second to suspend. We're, we'll take a, a roll call on this as a motion. You want to take a motion? Is there any objection? None, because we don't need to make a motion, just ask for suspension. That's all right, you're okay now. Is there any objection to suspension? There being none, please call the roll. Oh, nope, I need a motion no. to put the resolution. I'd make a motion to put the resolution upon his passage. Second. I've motion. got you all confused now. Motion and second to put uh, 2451 upon his passage. Any discussion? There is none, please call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Hanna? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 2452 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Gisha, and Bauk authorizing entry into a contract for the Financial Management Information Systems Project, and that is just to follow up to 2451. Yes, and just to be consistent, I'll need to suspend the rules. I'd make a motion to suspend. Second. There is a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to that? There is none. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to put the resolution upon his passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I see on the one we just passed, 2451, we're coming, taking $175,000 out for the software out of the unreserved retaining earnings, something that's already existing within the budget. I do not see in 2452 for the $663,595 where that exactly is coming from. If that can be clarified. Um, President Hannah? Numbers in front of me, but there are. President we've isolated Hannah? all those dollars. Sorry. Public watching. Yes. Um, I don't have that data in front of me, but yes, all those dollars have been allocated okay. appropriately. Okay, thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I guess, you know, this is a lot of money that we're spending, and I, I'm just not sure that <laughs> we have enough information here. Um, I, I guess even at the, couldn't a presentation be made at the Committee of the Whole level to, to let us know how we're going to be spending this money, which departments are involved? Uh, I, I just think that our, our constituents should, should know this before we um, vote on such a, a, a huge amount of money. Thank you. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would ask that we open the floor to uh, the department head for IT. Is there, is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We actually didn't need that, but Tudor, yeah. the department head. I, I should probably run for office, right? Just kidding. But uh, this particular software package, the intent of it is to replace the current AS400 green screen text-based system that you have in the system here. Can you get a little closer? Oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, the intent of this software is to replace the AS400 green screen text-based system that has been here in, this, in the city since 1982. A big portion of why we're trying to replace this software, obviously, is that long-term, there's a huge potential cost saving in terms of maintenance, 
and the ability to support this particular application as we move into the, front, into the future. What you're going to have on here is that eventually most of the people who are well versed with the support of this particular software will no longer be available. So what we need to do is safeguard the, 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 the finance and the ability of the city to remain viable as we move through the future. We have uh, President Hanna and then Alderman McClendon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Can you explain a little bit to the people at home the process that you went through in determining if this software was the appropriate? Sure. What the city did as a whole is that there was a committee that was put together made up of internal department heads. As part of that process, an RFP was submitted to multiple vendors, and based on that listing of vendors that returned uh, response to the RFP back to the city, we made uh, a selection of four separate vendors. Based on those four particular vendors, we went through and did uh, online demonstration of those particular software. After that, the, the final two candidates were selected based on uh, functionality, costs, and uh, usability within what the city was trying to accomplish. Based on that, after that, we went to and looked at two uh, current install sites of this particular uh, software. Um, we went through and looked at one of the particular software was installed at the city of Wauwatosa. There was another one that we went through that had the installation at the city of Beloit. And then based on those site visits and all the information that we had, we invited the preferred vendor to come on site here to do a two-day demonstration with various representatives throughout the, uh, the city. Uh, within that, you had individuals pretty much from every department that participated in the selection process of this software. And then based on input that we were able to gather from those individuals, we made the selection of that particular software. Yeah. Alderman Klingers. Thank you, Your Honor. I had a question. It lists this as being a financial management information system. Mm -hmm. that will, this will not cover then human resources because I think that's the other department that needs to have a revamping. This particular software package would not only Re, uh, replace the financial software, which is the accounting side of it. It will also replace the human resources okay. software too as well. And in conjunction to that, it will also replace the building inspection and the permit enforcement uh, uh, module within the software itself too as well. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Uh, Mr. Lee, um, this, this software, you said it's, this is being used in the city of Wauwatosa? It's right being now. used in the city of Beloit. It's Beloit also being and used. Uh, uh, that's the competitor that we didn't choose. Okay. Yes. Is this being used in other municipalities in the state of Wisconsin? Yes, there are about a dozen municipalities in the state uh, of Wisconsin. Of comparable that size to yes, the city of Yes, uh, city of Beloit is comparable. Uh, Oshkosh is also using this software. Uh, the city of La Crosse is also using this software. And um, West Bend is also using this software too as well. You answered my question, sir. Thank you. Paul yeah. Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Then this new software, does that include all the departments for, for that money? Are we including like the city clerk and the city assessor? Is everybody going to be connected? Eventually it will be. Those additional uh, departments are actually like uh, different functionality, different module within the system. Over this year and the next year, we plan to replace everything within the city with this new uh, information system. Within this budget? That uh, not this year, but next year. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Hope. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. And instead of this sort of Frankenstein monster we've kind of created over the years, as we move to the future, this will become very plug and play, right? When we want a city clerk module, we'll buy that module and just plug it in. That, right? is, that is correct. We will no longer do customized software development as you see it today. So everything that we do as a city and for the sake of cost saving will be commercial off the shelf software and system. What that means is that you would buy it off the shelf and you plug it into the system, you configure it to run the way you want to, and that will more or less eliminate the need to do customized application and uh, build out specific functionality just for uh, unique purposes. Alderman Kittleson, third time. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, and are you planning on beginning this process immediately? The moment we get it uh, done today, uh, we're starting tomorrow. You're so, starting tomorrow? And, yes. and are you going to need more people in place in order to no. implement this? We're going to implement it with the people that we have in-house. And you'll be able to accomplish that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. On time and on budget. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Just to point out that uh, <clears throat> there has been a considerable amount of work, thought, site locations, um, input put into this project. It just didn't happen just, just recently. There will be no more uh, input. Uh, 2452, there's a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. 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 Thank you. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 2453 through 2457. Lies over. 2428, I mean 2458 through 2465 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 2466 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 2467 by law and licensing. Recommending denying taxi cabs driver's license number 7787 based on public safety concerns, loss of driver's license, and violations related to the licensed activity. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second to adopt. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is uh, Julia Locke here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Please proceed, thank you. Uh, Ms. Locke appeared before our committee last Tuesday and because of the fact that she's going to be losing her driver's license shortly, uh, we uh, decided not to grant the taxi cab driver's license. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2468 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7798 based on the applicant's ineligibility to hold the license. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the uh, report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is Bernie. We are, we are act here tonight. It's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Uh, we are, we are contacted uh, Deputy City Attorney Adams and voluntarily withdrew his uh, application because he's ineligible for the license because of his criminal record. Thank you, Vice President Boren. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clayunas? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2469 by law and licensing recommending adopting the revised policy state on issuance of original Class A intoxicating liquor licenses. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this topic put a, uh, took up uh, a considerable amount of discussion time at the last two law and licensing meetings, and we took a vote at the uh, last law and licensing meeting, and this uh, change in policy uh, was uh, got a unanimous approval. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is not. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I just question this change in policy. Um, basically, from what I understand, we have two liquor licenses, as far as retail liquor licenses, left in this city. Um, now, I, I was formerly in the convenience store business in this city. I'm now out of it. I don't have an interest in this field. Um, but I, what I, I question granting one of only two liquor licenses we have 
to a multi-use convenience store facility, uh, being that this could be something in the future that could actually add significantly to the tax base of this city. Um, and also, I also question whether it is a fair playing field with only two licenses left in the city to existing convenience store owners in this city. Um, I wasn't uh, aware of this situation until this evening, but when I just look at it on the surface, those, those are the questions that come to mind for myself. Um, like I said, I was in this business. I am no longer in this business in the city of Sheboygan. I have no interest in this, but I do question whether having only two retail liquor licenses left in the entire city, um, whether we want to grant one of those for this purpose. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ringflesh. Mm. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I thank Alderman Ryan for his comments. I think they got to the heart of the matter of what we've been discussing for two very long meetings and long licensing. So thank you for your comments. Uh, uh, they're very uh, prescient and, and, and insightful. Um, what we're really looking at with this one is that we have had three licenses available for quite some time. There has not been a, a need of development. Uh, there has been no request for that until recently. Uh, we're actually further on in our agenda. There will be one that comes up. Um, I think that will lie over or be referred to law and licensing again. Um, the policy in front of, of the older persons present here is basically the policy that did exist. And keep in mind there's a difference between policy and ordinance. There is no ordinance on the city books prohibiting uh, a convenience store, um, someplace that has food uh, and gas pumps from uh, having a, a liquor license as well. Um, it's not a, a, a state ordinance, state law as well. But the policy is something that we direct the committee. The, the committee itself votes at the beginning of every session to say, this is what we think. So for those people that do the work for us, um, the city clerk's office, city attorney's office, uh, have these policies ahead of us. They know the direction we'd like to go uh, in. Uh, so basically the, prep, the, the, the first full page you see there up, up to basically item number one is the current policy in that we request that we have separate segregated interior space that's separate from the rest of the store, not intermingled, a gate or other apparatus that uh, can be closed off and secure that the liquor area between 9 and 8, 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. Again, intoxicating liquor versus fermented malt beverages, that's a different policy, keep that in mind, that we're looking strictly at the hard liquor and wine. Um, a separate manned uh, register checkout that is already in place. And the layout must be comply with all applicable code requirements. We just can't pass a policy here and that overrides um, the, the, uh, the state codes and, and the codes that we have for developing area. Uh, so those are already in existence uh, for places. We currently have places that are not in compliance with that. Um, item number one addresses that. Um, sorry, as liquor in the south side of town was annexed into the city uh, and is currently um, for sale with a new owner. If we did not pass number one, that person's basically here, 401k, well, the retirement, the, the blood, sweat, and tears of all those years of work would be for nothing. He would not be able to sell his business because the new business owners under the policy would not be able to, to um, buy the business from him. Um, and new owners wouldn't buy it if, if they couldn't actually use it for the, the current uh, use. Um, would you restrict it then to anything that's current class A premise as long as no material changes? Uh, we could, he could not open a... Uh, a, a game room, video arcade room attached to that that was materially changed, the business itself would have to kind of sort of stay as is. Uh, and then uh, we have had uh, proposals, one which is in front of us today. Keep in mind we'll not be discussing or voting on the actual proposal in front of you for the Mad Max convenience store. Rather, under current policy, he can't even apply uh, because it's immediately turned down. So that's why we're looking for a change in, in the policy so that we can at least look at the proposal and decide if we're going to vote for it in, count, in the committee or not. Um, but we can't really ignore the fact that what we're looking at is something that's specific to a neighborhood that I think is very uh, underserved right now. Uh, people who live there, may, many do not have vehicles, do not have cars, uh, do need to take the, the bus or other, or other modes of transportation to get to grocery stores on the far north side or the far south side. We do not have anything in the middle here. If you look closely at that, what we are looking at is something that would be a mini grocery store, if you will, with the fuel pumps, uh, serve a section of the community, and would be a large investment 
into the city that Alderman Ryan is looking for. I think it's, it's a good use of that because it does add um, tax base to something that's currently uh, abandoned and empty land in a very small convenience store. So I think in terms of what we're looking at, I think it's, it really does benefit the city, benefits the neighborhood. Um, this, this development will not happen unless we do change at least the policy. Um, and so we're not just simply looking at one. And the other thing that this policy does is create for the future. Uh, because we have exceptions to the rules right now, at least we create a policy that says, aha, we will allow gas pumps, but it will have to be at least 3,000 square feet, a, a larger building. Uh, it does have to have all four of those. It has to be separately gated. It has to be separately uh, staffed with a separate cash register. Um, so I think in, in general we would be um, promoting even those with existing uh, liquor license to grow uh, their stores, in, invest in their buildings, make a larger building, and at least with that one that's available, we will be able to, um, to really withhold hold out until someone has the right plan. Keep in mind that the committee still has the last say on the licenses being granted or not. If we're not in agreement with the proposed use of the building or the structure, um, just because they, they fit the 3,000 square feet does not mean it has to be granted. It still has to be within the best interest of the neighborhood and the best interest of the city. So I urge you to, to support this. Uh, quite frankly, I would love to see that building uh, in that area be developed and changed. I think it would be a nice addition to a part of the city that is, is underdeveloped right now. Uh, I look forward to the tax revenues that it would generate for the city. Um, and, I, I, and I look forward to working with uh, Stephen Jester, who I've met several times, uh, and definitely has, I think, the city's best interest in, in heart, uh, not to simply be a um, take from the neighborhood, but actually give something back to that neighborhood as well. Thank you. Thank you. Let me flash Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, this could be, it seems kind of confusing to me, kind of back and forth, but from what I understand, what we're doing tonight is we're not granting the license. We're giving the committee the tool to possibly give the license to this company if it feels fit to possibly grant the license because right now they can't. So all we're doing is approving a policy that, that they had governing themselves to begin with. And then if they do approve it, say, yeah, you can have a license, it still comes to council, and this council still has the final approval. So all we're doing tonight is saying, yeah, possibly we'll give you the license, maybe. We're not granting anything. Thank you. Okay. Okay. No further discussion. Please call the roll. Mayor. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Nope. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 2470 to be referred. Report of committees 8 by Public Works. Uh, to whom was referred resolution number 2260708 by Oman Gisha and Hannah authorizing the payoff of a 1997 City of Shibuya and Colbo Marina bond sends a document to the Common Council with no recommendation. Alvin Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to file the resolution saying that the committee could not come to an agreement one way or the other. We were at a stalemate. Is there a second? Motion and second. Under discussion. There be a none. Alderman Rangelis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I understand the stalemate, but I think you give a rundown, at least a little bit, of the discussion at hand or summary to see the fors and against this and where we came to where we couldn't quite get over the hill on that. I, I'd love to hear some discussion from the committee on that. Thank you. Alderman Mayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, basically, we were saying the same thing to um, file it, but we were both saying it in a different fashion. Um, we need more, we would like to see this looked into further as far as refinancing the bond and that was basically what we came down to. Um, Alderman Ryan had a different version of it but we just still could not come to any conclusion on it so it comes with no recommendation and we have to move on from there. Okay. Alderman Ryan. Thank you Mr. Mayor. Uh, Indeed, I, I did not want to see it filed because I didn't want to see it just die. Um, that's why I did not make a recommendation to file. I believe it does need to be looked into uh, more in depth as far as possibly refinancing um, the, the bond. 
um, and I, I did not want to uh, take uh, possibly uh, borrowing from the motor vehicle fund off the table. Um, because if it makes financial sense to do so to save the city money, I think uh, there's no reason to file it. And therefore, that's why we had a stalemate in our committee, because we only had four people present. Thank you. Um, nope. Thank you, Your Honor. I I'm just trying to recall, is it, has the motor vehicle uh, committee, fund committee, or Marine and Harbor come back with an opinion yet? Because I don't believe we have in finance. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Marina and Harbor Committee came back with uh, an affirmative motion on it. The Finance Committee is still waiting to hear from our investment consulting group that's coming up on the 24th. And the mo uh, Motor Vehicle Fund, which consists of myself and all the person Meyer, we haven't met yet, but we will. And just a follow-up, Your Honor. So if we, uh, if we file this this evening, then that, that doesn't make, mean the resolution is dead. It will still come back, it could come back via those other committees. Very sure. good. Thank That's you, sir. Formality. Gotcha. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to be clear on the Marine and Harbor Committee, they did recommend to move forward with this, but they also recommended that we look into refinancing because they did not want to hurt public works if that money is truly needed in that department. Thank you for the clarification. Any more discussion? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm on public works, but I was not at that meeting. I was out of town, obviously. Um, I think it might be appropriate to refer it back to public works. In doing that, I want to make sure that public works is clear with enough information that they would uh, funnel through the channels so that when information and recommendations for ARENA and finance are here in the council, that the appropriate input from public works would also be current and up to date and as significant as possible. Thank you. Second. Second. Was, it, was that a motion? It's now a motion. To what? Uh, refer it back to committee. Motion to refer back to committee, and there was a second under discussion. Attorney McLean, uh, comment? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, my only comment was uh, you know, this happens when documents are referred to multiple committees. You've got a report from one that's really no recommendation, but I, I disagree. I think if you f file this resolution tonight, you're killing it in all the other committees too. That's the same document. So, you know, if you're, if you want to wait, I think you ought to wait to get the input from the various committees. And one way to do that would be to refer it back to Public Works, have further discussion there, and then you also have an opportunity to get the input from the other committees that haven't reported out on it. One of the things that I see happening a lot is there are some aldermen, and sometimes for good reason, or I should say all the time for good reason, that don't show up to a meeting and everything is being held and rerun and rehashed over and over because somebody didn't show up. Uh, it gets pretty difficult to do business that way after a while. Uh, there are a lot of aldermen that obviously can't make the meetings, but that's why we have a quorum. If there's three people, they are entrusted to make decisions for the body and move on. It's very, very difficult to just keep sending things back after someone doesn't show up to meetings. Next, we have Alderman Bulk. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, shoot, I lost my thought. Uh, so I'll wing it. Uh, Mr. Capitillo is clearly concerned that we might be raiding, I think his word was raiding, the Motor Vehicle Fund. So in order to keep everything very public and so that Mr. Capitillo can sleep easy at night, I appreciate uh, uh, Alderman Manny's request to send it back. I think it's absolutely appropriate. I think it would be absolute craziness for us to weigh in on a 1.3 or $4 million opportunity and not have an opinion from the committee that has absolute investment in what happens to that. So uh, for my part, Your Honor, it, it's a no-brainer to send it back to the uh, Public Works Committee. Thank you. And I appreciate Alderman Manny's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Go ahead. That's it. No, I, and I appreciate Alderman Manny uh, uh, wanting to be a part of that decision. Thank you very much. Uh, Owen Ryan. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, there, there are times uh, being a part-time alderman that people cannot make meetings. Uh, alderman Manny, for one, I know makes every meeting that, uh, that uh, he, he humanly can. Uh, he was not able to be at this meeting. I believe this is a very important issue, and therefore I believe it should be referred back to committee. Thank you. Thank you, Owen Ryan. Any more discussion on the motion to refer back? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2472 by finance. 
recommend and terminating tax incremental finance in district number eight and authorizing the city deputy finance director treasurer to distribute excess increment to overlying taxing districts. President Hannum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, move to accept and adopt the RC and then put the resolution upon as passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rin Fleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Ann Meyer. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. I need, I need to go back a little bit here to 2471. I'd like the city attorney to clarify something for me that's confusing. Mr. Attorney, or city attorney, are you saying that if a resolution or an ordinance is referred to two or three committees, more than one, and the first one that comes in that, that causes an action, that's the action that will prevail over every one of them? Yes, it's the same document. If, if uh, the council files that resolution, the resolution is dead. And if the council passes, that if resolution is passed? Right. Okay. Even though it's still in the other committees, you know, the action is taken. And that's why uh, you get, the council has to be careful, I think, when you do have multiple referrals, that if you do want to get all the input of the committees, if one comes in earlier than the other, if you have an opportunity to wait, you should probably wait till all the various referrals come to the council and then take action because once you take action, you take an action on the one document. Uh, granted, it's gone to different committees, but the council action is the final action on that document. Thank you. I just seem to recall instances where that didn't happen. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a quick question. Um, I was also at the Marina and Harbor. That document is not here tonight, and that one came in with a favorable recommendation. Where is that document? So we would have had two documents tonight one for, one against, then what would have happened? And I'm, I'm confused as to where that document is. Pardon me? I don't know where, where the document is. Well, and again, that's a good instance. We have to be very careful because, I mean, I, know, I think I can remember, I think I can dig them up. Instances where this has happened before and that has not killed debate and action in other committees, it continues to go around. And if we would have had two, the one that gets it first, whichever has the most vote is going to get it. This is why it's very important, and I'm going to look at this tomorrow and hopefully provide some answers for you. But, and, I, and I trust what Attorney McLean is saying, but I seem to remember somewhat vivid that this has happened before where an action that the council has taken does not automatically kill other action that, that, that comes forth later. So please keep that in mind. Moving on. Ordinance is introduced 10, 2473, lies over. 2470, uh, 2474 and 75 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2360 and RO, RO number 5230708 by the city clerk, submitting a communication from Sheboygan Memorial Post number 9156, requesting permission to hold their annual, bear with me, I have a hard time saying this, their annual Buddy Poppy Drive in May 2008, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd um, <clears throat> move that the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. Motion and second to file. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2344, resolution number 2290708 by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, and Boren, approving the fiscal 2008 one year annual action plan for the Community Development Block Grant Program submission. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 13 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 2345, resolution number 230708, 
by Alderman Boren, Playunas, Gisha, Bauk, authorizing to purchase an agent to enter into a contract for the purchase of a signed plotter. All of Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, I'd like to make an amendment uh, to the resolution which I passed out to the older persons and, and uh, I believe uh, you all have a copy of it. And the amendment is as follows. An amendment directing Mr. Bill Bittner, Director of, Public, of the Public Works Department, to establish a policy for the Public Works Department that any specialty sign manufactured by the Public Works Department for any third party have a price markup consistent with area private sector sign companies to include the cost of materials, design time, and labor, labor to include cost of wages, health insurance, and pension to produce the sign. In the spirit of, sh in the spirit of shared services, the Sheboygan School District or local government entities will receive a 5% discount on sign prices. Further, a draft of this policy is to be presented by Mr. Bittner to the Public Works Committee and the Finance Committee by May 12, 2008 for approval. So I make that amendment. You need a motion? Is that a motion? I need a, a motion. Second. Motion and second under discussion on the amendment. President Hanna. Thank you. I would, I agree with the amendment, but I'd also add uh, for local nonprofits to also receive the courtesy of the 5% discount. Can we, can we, uh, okay, thank you. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I agree with the uh, amendment. I guess my question is, how often do we give signs to other local entities? And, and if, if it is quite often, why only 5%? You know, for shared services, I think maybe we should go a little bit more. I'm mean, just off the top of my head, I'm thinking 10%, 25%. It depends how often it happens. Because I know in public works, a lot of times we, I'm sorry, public protection safety, a lot of times we ask them to put signs up for the safety, but if we're gonna charge them and only give them a 5% discount, I think that might be problem, problematic. Thank you. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, maybe we could open up the floor to uh, Mr. Bittner on this issue. Uh, the, reason, the reason I wanted a policy to be made on this issue is because this new sign plotter that we're purchasing for public works is a very sophisticated uh, sign machine. And when word gets out that the city has this, I think there's probably going to be a lot more opportunities for public works to make signs for other govern, government entities. And I think it's good to have a policy in place, you know, if that eventuality uh, happens. But in order to answer Alderman Vanderweele's question as far as how often or how many signs we're making, Mr. maybe Mr. Bittner could address that if we'd open up the floor to him. Mr. Mr. Bittner, your department head, please come up. Good evening. I, I can't add a lot to what uh, Alderman Orrin's already indicated, that uh, uh, we share resources, obviously, with some of the other local governments, particularly the county and basic signs and those type of things in which we both have access, and it's much more an inventory question. I think Alderman's, Alderman's uh, Orrin's resolution already indicates this is about specialty signs as opposed to the things we use every day. Uh, we do not make a lot of specialty signs because we don't have that capability at the moment. So it, this really comes from a speculation that we're greatly increasing our capability to make things such as the Blue Harbor directional signs or wayfinding signs. And when that happens, there's some opportunity. And I think this was discussed at a couple of different committees that that opportunity be captured, I guess, and we both make our capability available, but also uh, use it as a little bit of a revenue stream, and I think that's the intent here. Thank you, Mr. Pritner. Alderman Rinkos. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, follow quick, I guess a question on, on um, what defines third party. Uh, I can think of specific, specifically when road construction is going on and Michigan Avenue, Indiana Avenue, Business Drive, when businesses that we are really can be harming because the traffic is, is closed. I often see signs out on the barricade saying for access to such and such business, 
turn right and turn left again. And often I can definitely see them putting their logos on so people know what business they're talking about. Would that be under the policy or would that be something that we would still be billing them for? Alderman oh, Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We, we did discuss this in public works, and, and I think what we're referring to is um, basically intergovernmental uh, uh, entities. In other words, the city doing work for the county. Um, that is your third party. It is, not, uh, it is not between departments in the city. It's city doing work for the county, city doing work for uh, any other entity that is not within the city. That would be your third party. Um, now, as far as the 5% markup, I don't know if that is appropriate, a 5% discount, because uh, dealing between the county and the city, uh, truthfully, dealing from bureaucracy to bureaucracy, a 5% discount, I'd just as soon go elsewhere and get it on the outside for 5% more and probably speed up the whole process normally. So I, 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 I think that possibly that 5% um, might be not you know, might not be appropriate as far as a discount rate because we may just uh, price ourselves right out of the market of doing any outside work with this system. Um, what that number is, I, I do not know, but uh, I think it should probably be greater than 5% for uh, work uh, to other government entities. Thank you. Alderman Manderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Instead of kind of rushing through this tonight, and possibly making a mistake or you know not looking into it as much as we should be. I'm gonna make a motion to send this to finance so that they can look at the uh, the discount and look at the nonprofits if there's any problems, any complications that, that we may be looking at. There's a motion and second to send it to finance. On the motion to refer it to finance, any discussion? Your Honor. Attorney I have, McLe I have a question. I guess the issue is this is just an amendment to this contract to buy a sign water. And I don't know if you want to hold up buying the sign water. If you do, that's fine. Then refer the whole thing. But it's really a separate issue. And maybe uh, if what you want to do is have discussion at Public Works on your next agenda regarding this topic, you could just you know, uh, file the amendment, act on the sign water, and come up with a clean policy that has nothing to do with actually buying the side plotter. Alderman Manuel, will follow up? I thought that's what you meant. You wanted to send well, the whole thing. Based on that information, I'll retract my motion. And uh, I trust it will either go in finance or public works for further discussion. The simple, I think there's two issues here. One issue is, do we buy a sign plotter? I think everybody's in agreement with that. Let's move that on. The amendment uh, can, can be can be, uh, if, if it needs to be an amendment, that's fine, but it also can be a, a directive later on to, to Mr. Bittner and be put on the agenda by, by, by Public Works and then discuss and then send back to the council for approval. Two separate things. You got a policy and you got the purchase of a plotter. Mm -hmm. However you want to do it. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. Mr. Oh, Vice President Bourne was next. Oh, oh, apologize. Okay. Uh, I would uh, suggest that we move ahead with purchasing the plotter. They've waited a year and a half to get this piece of equipment. And then if we need to establish policy at a later date, that's terrific. Okay. Vice President Board. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, last, the last directive here, and I, I don't, first of all, I don't have a problem with Mr. Bittner coming back with a different discount or no discount. This is just a recommendation. And what I'm, what I'm asking that Mr. Bittner be directed to do is come up with a policy using some of these guidelines. The 5% discount is not carved in stone, whatever he comes up with. And he's already instructed to bring back a policy to public works and finance by May 12th. So this gives him from now until May 12th to come up with this policy, bring it back to the committees. The committees will take a look at it and vote yay or nay, and then it'll come back to this body for final approval. So he kind of has his marching orders and a time frame to do it in already. So I would just as soon proceed with this amendment tonight so Mr. Bittner can get working on this and come back with a policy by May 12th. And I have a legal question. Attorney McLean, is this uh, amendment to the uh, resolution, just thinking about the, the difficulty in having two separate issues, is this amendment germane to the motion? Uh, it's certainly questionable whether it is or not. Uh, 
uh, and I had that concern to begin with as, as well. I, uh, I don't really see the tie into buying the sign plotter. I, I understand the object about establishing a policy for its use, but uh, it really is uh, a separate issue. And uh, I guess as, as a compromise, Alderman Bourne, would, would it be okay then to go ahead and proceed with authorizing the purchase and then having a document come in that will be referred to Public Works, directing Public Works and the director to come up with a policy? I have no problem with that as long as it eventually gets also referred back to finance. No problem with that either. I don't Fine. think anybody has a problem. Anybody want to nod their heads? We're okay? <laughs> okay. So we're taking... We have Alderman Clayunas. Clayunas? Alderman Clayunas? Yeah, I just a point of order. I think we need to vote on the, the amendment. Isn't that what's on the floor? Right now we have a motion uh, to adopt this or pass this amendment. Yeah, so right now. I, right. I call the question on the amendment. So we're, we're about to, if you, okay. don't, if you don't mind. We, mm -hmm. The discussion was germane to the amendment. Alderman Renfleisch, no. on the amendment only. On the amendment only. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mayor, excuse me. Um, you actually stole my thunder on the question of uh, is, is, the, uh, is the amendment itself germane to, to the resolution in front. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, you beat me to it. Um, I think, well, the discussion regarding the, the, the policy is a good one. We just dealt with the policy coming out of law and, and licensing. Uh, that's something the policy acts within the committee itself. Uh, so I guess with the, the motion being to uh, adopt the amendment, I, I'd urge you at this point in time to everyone to vote no on the amendment at this point, um, pass the resolution as it stands, uh, and simply have the uh, Public Works Committee, uh, the chairperson, add a discussion point, the discussion and possible action regarding policy, regarding the sign. Um, anything that comes out of that can be comes to this committee and can be referred back to finance at that point in time. I think that's something that we should get, get, have the respect for the... Uh, the chairman of that committee to be able to, to uh, put that on the agenda and act appropriately that way. And there's no need to vote down on the amendment by Vice President Bourne if you would just like to withdraw it. Withdraw. withdraw the second. So that, that motion is withdrawn. We are back to 2345 to authorize the purchase of a uh, sign plotter. Everybody okay? Please call roll. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Bourne. Aye. Falk. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. and Ryan. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 2346, resolution number 2310708 by Alderman Boren, Clayunas, Gisha, Bauk, amending resolution number 1030708, approving the revised capital improvements program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period 2008 through 2012 and adopting the 2008 program for implementation and moving $450,000 from the Indiana Avenue improvements to the Eisner Avenue reconstruction for implementation in 2008. That was a mouthful. All Vice President Warren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Alderman Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I won't be supporting this um, for two reasons. Number one, this is, does um, affect my district, but number two, it's a matter of principle. Um, we've already publicly stated that we'll be um, improving Indiana Avenue. That's been publicized, and now we're retracting that and shifting money elsewhere, and now I have to tell my district that they're on hold. So if somebody could give me an answer in terms of what criteria was um, taken to make this shift and why... Um, the improvements of Indiana Avenue has been postponed. Mr. Bulky, would you please come up, sir? Mr. Bulky, city engineer. Thank you, Your Honor, and the city council. Uh, Indiana, Avenue, Indiana Avenue, the design was put off, or not the design, the state awarding them funds was put off until October of 2008. We are still going forward with the bidding process. We just don't need to borrow our local match this year. So um, we are going to be going forward with the project. It's just going to be starting in March of 2009. Alderman Smith. 
Thank you. Just a follow-up question. You said this, so we're relying on the state, and the state didn't come through for this. Was there anything that we needed to provide the state? What was the answer that they had given to us why we postponed this project, but yet we have money for another? The Indiana Avenue project, uh, we were delayed in getting the bids together, the, the plans put together for the state, and we missed the deadline, and we went forward with uh, delaying that for a couple of months. Alderman Benny? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, another question, Mr. Balke. Please. Uh, the 450000 directed to Eisner, is that for preliminary work, obviously the whole project would not be done this year? Correct. Uh, it's for the, the design, some utility relocations that need to take place ahead of the construction next year. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Benny. Okay. Oh, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to reiterate, Bill, we are going to be starting then with the Indiana, uh, Indiana Avenue when? Indiana Avenue is still going to be bid this year. It'll be bid this year, right? And it, we will probably okay. go ahead with that. It, it, the contracts will be awarded later this year by the state. Okay. October, November, December. Construction will start next year, early March. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Thank you. All on Ryan. Um, on Indiana Avenue, we're talking Indiana Avenue uh, west of Fourteenth Street, correct? Yes, between Out 14th and 17th. To the Taylor Drive? No. Or to uh, 20, what is that? 20th? Bridge. It's 17th. Yeah, 17th. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, 2346. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Hannah? Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Smith? No. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 2347, resolution number 232-0708 by Alderman Boren, Clayunis, Gisha, Bauk, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriation for a rebate received from Alliant Energy. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittl Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. <laughs> Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. And Vanderweel? 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2348, resolution number 2330708 by Alderman Bourne, Clayunis, Gisha, and Bauk, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for contribution received from Alderman Bourne for flags purchased for the conference rooms. Vice President Bourne, for your contribution. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to thank Alderman Bourne for the generous donation for the other flags and uh, appreciate him stepping up. Yep. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I too want to commend Alderman Bourne for stepping up, and he did it for a very noble purpose that I hope he'll explain to the to the city. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. <clears throat> thank you, Your Honor. A little bit of a history of the donation. I was happy to see uh, the veterans from the council, Alderman Heidemann, uh, Alderman Bauk, and Alderman Ryan, step forward with the resolution that uh, the Pledge of Allegiance was going to be recited at all uh, committee meetings and commission meetings. Well, after we passed that resolution, <clears throat> we found out that we were going to be about 10 US flags short for all of the various uh, meeting rooms. Uh, my father turned 90 years old on February 15th and uh, served in World War II in the U.S. Navy in the Pacific. And I thought it would be a good tribute to him to donate this. And also for some uh, high school friends who served in Vietnam who paid the uh, ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Boren. And I echo the Alderman's uh, appreciation. 2348, 
There's a motion to put it upon its passage, and there is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 14 ayes. 20, motion carries. 2367, resolution 2340708 by Alderman Hannah. Granting the VFW to hold the annual poppy drive on May 16th and 17th, 2008. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I see that you edited the name on that one. <clears throat> I do make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2357, General Ordinance Number 930708 by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, and Gisha, establishing the salary for the position of mayor. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wondered if the, um, the committee or the people that put this together just uh, could explain what did they, how did they decide this, that this would be the breakdown of the annual rate? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We have the salaries from uh, 1996 and onward, and I think this would increase, whomever the mayor is, would increase the salary by $2,000. The original um, proposal was maybe a bit more than that in Alderman Gisha, and then everybody unanimously thought that 71958 was appropriate. Okay. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. In 2004, we voted for a four-year increase for the mayor's salary. Starting in 2005, small increases, and in 2007, no increase. In 2008, it ended at 68397 according to my records. Mm -hmm. And then um, for the public, what we're looking at is 2009, 71958 increasing slowly, like Alderman Montemayor said, ending in 2012 to 78631 And... And in 2004, you know, it was whoever the mayor would be, this is what they'd be getting, and it is the same today. I just simply believe that the city of Sheboygan's mayor shouldn't make over $60,000. So I will vote against this tonight. Thank you. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, too, will be voting no against this one, not specific to any person holding office or who has held office or may potentially hold office. My concern is simply this. I think when we're going up to 78,000 uh, in, in May 2012, we're going in a direction that we're just doing it unilaterally. We're definitely keeping the position of full-time mayor. And I think we still need to look at proposals that would include perhaps part-time mayor and full-time city administrator or something. Uh, so I'd rather see um, a, a analysis of, of that. Um, I certainly think at, at the current salary there'll be more than enough people willing to run for position of mayor. I don't think we need to necessarily keep increasing it by the almost 2,000 a year. Um, and I think actually at 70,000, we're at close to being able to hire pretty much any city administrator we want for a city this size at that point in time. Um, you know, we all get the, um, the um, municipality magazine, and there's always in the back, if you look, uh, while they're smaller towns specifically, um, but some of them start at $50,000, uh, $55,000. So I think we, we, we can look at this and say, can we do something different or better? We haven't really had that full debate yet of which kind of government we'd like. Can we downsize the council itself? Do we, do we need 16? Can we do with eight? Can we have a city administrator? I don't know what the ultimate solution is in that aspect, but I'd rather see that debate versus then simply proposing and, and moving forward on this annual salary. Thank you. Alderman Rand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, We're not quite to you, Alderman Wagaman. I got a bunch of lights blinking here. Is that me? Yes, Ryan. <laughs> Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, taking all politics out of this, um, does a, a mayor in our city deserve to earn $71,000 or $78,000 a year? The answer to that question is yes. It's a hard job. Um, truthfully, um, I, I, I don't think that's out of line at all. And we're not going to hire a city administrator for $71,000 a year that's uh, uh, qualified as a city administrator, I doubt. 
However, um, I'm going to vote against this simply for the fact that uh, it appears that we will be entering an area uh, uh, of, of unprecedented deficits coming up in the next several years, uh, having no uh, uh, revenue increases in the city, and that is the only reason I'm going to vote against this. It's, it's not because the mayor holding office or any mayor does not deserve a, a raise in pay. I think the position deserves the salary at least. However, I don't think it's a, a good policy for, for us as a council um, when it appears we will be asking our departments to be cutting back further again next year uh, that we increase the, uh, the executive position salary at this time. Thank you. Thank you. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, I remember having this discussion when you and I sat on the school board. And Dr. Sheehan was the superintendent of schools. And I remember thinking to myself, he manages 13 properties, 600, 700 employees. In the private sector, he'd be making three, four times what he made as superintendent of schools. The mayor of this city manages physical plant that's enormous, hundreds of city employees. I don't think it's unreasonable uh, that we move towards this track. This does not preclude us having discussions about different forms of city government. It doesn't preclude us from having discussions about the size of the city council. But I think that it, uh, in terms of the magnitude of the job, um, I think this is certainly can be justified. Thank you, President Hill. Paulman Wagelman, you are next now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. I think, as they sometimes say with comedians, timing is everything. Not that I want to suggest this is funny, but I think the timing on this is really way off. Uh, we're looking at deficits everywhere. We're looking at real problems in the city. Uh, and I, I just think this is not the time to do it. Uh, I think it's, it's just very ill-timed. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my concern lies mostly with just the procedure in which this was taken, and I stand to be corrected. Something of this nature, I feel that it should have followed its due process. Tonight we were given an example of how our IT department had to give um, an explanation on what lengths they had gone to in terms of doing comparables, making sure that, that we could justify that expense. Why should any position, especially ourselves and the mayor, um, fall under any other category? I believe that this communication, this ordinance, should have been submitted through salary and grievance. And the scrutiny and the way that we arrive at providing an answer to the public as to why we arrive at those numbers um, can be justified. And again, I stand to be corrected if that's taken place. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Oh. Thank you, Your Honor. This resolution came through salary and grievance, and all of those things were considered, the comparables and, and all sorts of things were considered at the salary and grievance meeting. And it was introduced at our last council meeting, and it laid over, and now we're taking action on it. And I was going to agree with Alderman Hanna in that this certainly, the, almost the same words, does not preclude other considerations and other discussions. Thank you. Alderman Boak. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, oops. I appreciate my colleague's zeal for uh, budget restraint. Uh, I, hope that, I hope that we can uh, hold that spirit through next year's budget uh, planning. Sorry. Uh, uh, so an alderman makes 4,500-ish dollars a year. None of us do it because we want the 4,500 dollars we need. The f hopefully nobody does it because they need 4,500 dollars. They do it out of a spirit of uh, wanting to be part of uh, and help the city government. Uh, the mayor uh, depends on that. Not this mayor. I don't care who the mayor is now. I don't care who the mayor is in the future. But someone becomes a mayor and wants to compete for a salary, wants to give back, sure, but they want to have a salary. And I don't think 3% a year is unreasonable to consider whoever the mayor is in uh, a couple of years, whoever they are. I don't think 3% a year is unreasonable, even in the time uh, the budget difficulties we're going to face ahead. Uh, but I tell you what, I'm willing to sell my vote tonight. I am willing to vote this down tonight if the city employees throughout this city will only sign up for 3% a year for the next four years on their salaries, their hourly rates, and their benefits. Because if our, our wonderful city employees will restrict themselves to 
a year over the next four years, we don't have deficit problems. We don't have budget problems. So if anybody will sign up for that, for the city employees tonight, I'm willing to sell my vote and vote no. Thank you, Alderman Bolt. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, in committee, we discussed this a lot. And we decided that an executive position should have an executive salary. And in that discussion, we came up with this percentage. And we did not feel that this was, was in excess or, in fact, I felt it's rather low for the job that this, or the money that this job, the time and everything that this requires. And as was spoken by Alderman Hanna, this is what we should be doing. You know, you have employees under you. You, you came in this year with a budget deficit. We had, what, a two, three million dollar deficit at the beginning this year? You fixed that. And I think you can do it again. And I just feel if we want to have quality executive mayors, this is what they deserve. In fact, I think you should be getting more. And having a part-time mayor and a full-time, um, what do you call it, the um, administrator. administrator, we'd be losing more money. I think an administrator makes at least 100000 plus a part-time mayor, which would be a figurehead. And I don't believe that the city is looking for a figurehead. They want a full-time mayor with capabilities of running the city, running the departments, and that's exactly what we have right now. And I would assume in the future, we're going to have the same kind of mayors coming in. So I agree, you should get this raise, or not you, but set the salary for the future and continue on that, that course. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I haven't done recent research, but I believe from my memory that about two years ago, a teacher at the top of the salary range with 30 years and the masters would be making about $68,000. Now, for me, it's an insult if we can't pay our mayor what we pay one of our teachers who has much less responsibility and has very, very many fewer heartaches and tensions to deal with. So I think the figures are totally appropriate. They're below where they should be. Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, doing some research for tonight, I'd have to agree with Alderman Manning that that we are that this pay scale is below, because in 2004 we were one of the lowest people paying our mayor as much as we were paying in 2004, and I have a hard time believing it's any higher now. So it's correct; we should be paying more, but I don't agree with it. Thank you, Alderman Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm going to support this pay scale, and you know, this this amount this amount of salary for the responsibility of the Sheboygan mayor, whether it's Mayor Perez or another mayor, uh, for the responsibilities that go with his job and the workload that goes with his job, uh, this, in my opinion, this pay scale is not unreasonable at all. And of course, the number two on the, on the document that all full-time elected officials shall not engage in any outside business activities. Uh, during normal city office hours, I mean, this this is it as far as the income from our mayor. They're not allowed to go out and be engaged in any other business. I think it's more than reasonable. I'm going to support it. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Alderman Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to mention some food for thought here. Uh, one of the things that I've learned from sitting in this position is the importance of morale. And if something is good, it should be able to stand by itself. And one of the things that I would caution this council and those who are going to be taking on this position is that in order to, to justify one action, we shouldn't have to undermine our city employees. So I would just, again, just take that food for thought. If something's good, it should be able to stand on itself and just try to stick to the issue. Thank you. Thank you. And Alderman Bell. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to check and see if anybody's... Uh... If anybody's signing up for our city employees to hold their pay raises to 3% for the next four years. And I appreciate Alder, uh, the distinguished Alder person, uh, Alderman's, uh, Alder person Smith's comments, but it has nothing to do with not loving and respecting our city employees. It has everything to do with if we are going to jump in the boat and say we're all in this budget deficit and budget challenge together, then everyone can sign up and say we're all going to hold our salaries flat 
which is what we're asking uh, some future mayor, not this mayor, maybe, maybe this mayor, we're asking them to hold it flat. And if we're asking that person to hold it flat, then everybody needs to pony up. Cowboy up and get in the game, or uh, let's, uh, let's give the mayor what uh, anyone in that position deserves administrating what that person administers. Thank you, about. I would like to make some final comments before I call for the vote. <clears throat> The first comment I'd like to make is this was not initiated by me. I had no input. I did not lobby for it. There's no alderman here that can say I talked to you about voting yes for this amount of money. I did not initiate it. I did not lobby for it. You've got three positions that are elected here. You've got one that's elected at the municipal judge. And you've got all of you that are elected. But there's, two, there's one big difference, is that us three here, this is our job. We are public servants, and I take pride in saying that. But we're not allowed, as Vice President Bourne has said, to hold other jobs. This is it. You eat, you pay what you eat with what you get. That's it. You, all of you 16 aldermen, can go out and get two jobs, three jobs, if you're able to handle. You're not restricted to your elected salary. And you are an employee of the city of Sheboygan because you get paid by the city of Sheboygan and the taxpayers' money. The municipal judge is an elected position. That position, whoever the judge is, is allowed to have a full job. Most of them will. Those are public servant positions. These are public servant positions because we wish it to be. And our heart is in the city and we want it to be. But we're not allowed to have other jobs. This is it. I have commented over and over because to me it, it's somewhat funny, I would say, that I work 10 to 12 hours a day, I get blamed for 20, I get paid for five. And that's because there's about 60 people or more in the city that work directly under me that get paid more, lots more. And I'm saying this for the benefit of the public. They get paid lots more than I do, a lot more. And increases in those salaries go up every year automatically. Mine doesn't. And I'm saying these things not to lobby for a yes vote. I'm saying these things so that you understand and the public understands that I'm not out here lobbying for money. I do my job because I knew what, what it involved. I know that I have to go out and work and perform my mayoral duties on Saturdays and Sundays and be away from my family, get up early, stay up late. I know that's what I have to do. If I don't like that, then I don't run for mayor. The job of the mayor is a very serious job, and it entails a lot of hours in head banging. And I say that just so the people understand what I'm up against. But again, I did not initiate this. You do what you need to do. You do what you think is fair, not to me, to the position in the office of the mayor. Thank you very much. Please call the roll. Falk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? No. Kittleson? No. Kleinus? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Ryan? No. Smith? No. Vanderweel? Aye. No. No. No? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Aye. Okay. Aye. No. All right. Wangaman? No. Warren? Aye. Sit tight? Yes. I am not going to vote. The city code allows me to vote or not vote. This is an issue for you, Alderman, to handle. I would ask for somebody to make a motion to hold. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is, uh, resolution is held for next council meeting. We will move on. 2358, General Ordinance Number 940708 by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, Heidemann, Berhassel, amending the code so as to add a new title to Class Grade A 26A Pay Schedule X, Administrative Temporary Part-Time Extra Help. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 
Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warren, Aye. and Balk. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2372, General Ordinance Number 950708, by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, Heidemann, Verhassel, amending the municipal code so as to change the job code and the job description for the purchasing agent in the finance department's table of organization. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Balk? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2373, General Ordinance Number 960708, by Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, Heidemann, and Rehassel. Amending the municipal code so as to change the job code and the job description for the finance director treasurer in the finance department's table of organization. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you again, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to uh, make a motion in the job description, and I don't know if all the older persons have this, but under the under the qualifications, minimum qualifications for the position, I want to make a motion to delete the words of arts. And that is uh, under number two in the minimum qualifications, there was some language stricken from the qualifications and the new language was to read, requires a bachelor's of arts degree in accounting and or financial management from an accredited college registration as a certified public accountant preferred. Uh, the only thing I want to delete out of there is the words of arts, and then it would read, require a bachelor's degree in accounting and or final, uh, financial management from an accredited college registration as a certified public accountant preferred. So I'd make that motion to uh, delete the words of arts. Is there a second? Second. Well, I think it's uh, under discussion. I think that's a Good amendment. Vice President Boren. Alderman Kittleson. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I was going to ask that the same thing be done, that we, that we strike of arts. So thank, Alder, thank you, Alderman Boren, for doing that. I, I think that makes it clearer, and that's what our intention is. Am I, I'm correct on that. I would thank you. Hope. <laughs> Alderman Clayness. Thank you, Your Honor. Is that the only thing that was changed? Is that what we're voting on tonight? Was there, was there anything else in this job description that was changed? Hold on, Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yes, be previously uh, um, the criteria was a bachelor's degree from an accredited college with courses in accounting and or financial management. Now it has been changed to requires a bachelor's of arts um, or bachelor of science degree in accounting and or financial management from an accredited college. Registration as a certified public accountant preferred. So we are increasing the criteria. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Alderperson Montemayor answered my question. Thank you. Yep. There being more discussion, no more discussion, please call the roll. This is on the amendment? Yes, on the amendment only. Okay. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Oh, Vice President Boren, need a motion to pass it up as amended? Make a motion to pass the uh, general ordinance as amended. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There will be a none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, uh, 2476 will be referred to Public Works and Finance, 2777 of Public Works, 2478 of Finance and Public Works, 2479 of Public Works, 2480 of Public Works, and 81 of Public Works. 
Other matters, Attorney McLean. 2482 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Richard Meyer, manager of the Harbor Center bid, along with the audit of the books as conducted by Schenck Business Solutions. That will be referred to finance. 2483 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will go to law and licensing. 2484 is an ordinance repealing section 29-3 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code and creating new section 82-3 of the current Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to residency. That will be referred to salary and grievance. Don't get up, please. Um, uh, Samantha, you wish to say a few words? Thank you, Your Honor. You know, this position calls for, um, for you to speak in public, but I must say, this has been very difficult. I have spoken on various topics, but um, this being of personal nature has been difficult, so bear with me. Um, people have often asked me, Bonnie, what made you decide to get into politics? And I always answer, um, I live next door to a lady on um, South 14th Street, and her name was Lorraine Cup. She's probably watching. And I had a tremendous amount, and I still do, respect for this woman. She raised five kids on her own. Um, when I would go over to her house, um, her yard's immaculate. And she'd often tell me, oh, I you know, put the roof on, and I drywalled here. And she was very conscientious as a citizen of Sheboygan. And she took pride in her neighborhood. And I was participating in a neighborhood watch with Lorraine Cuff. And I'll never forget the day that I got a call from her. And she says, Bonnie, I have an idea. And you probably think I'm crazy. But I think you should run for alder person. And you know what? At that, that, that second, I thought, whether or not I would win or lose, if I had Lorraine Cup's vote, that's all that mattered. It's been difficult to think about what I'm going to say because how do I say in a few statements four years of gratitude for this city? It has been said, Sheboygan's politics is unknown. It's nothing like any other place. And with that, I got to say, I have learned from the best, the best. You know, it was sad this last election. I wish I should have spoke this actually then. To see very few people run for election. Let me tell you, this can be the most difficult job, yes, but I'll tell you what, it is the most rewarding. What I have learned here on this floor, I tell people all the time, I will never learn it in a classroom. It has taught me so much. I also want to say, that although this is a public position, there are times where it is very lonely. And you all know, you can talk your spouse or your significant ear off. <laughs> and I would have probably gotten together with you more if it wasn't considered a walking quorum. <laughs> Thank goodness I've had a trusted friend and colleague like Marge Segulli, who's probably, you know, our spouses probably were thankful that we could talk and talk and talk. But I, I have to mention this. And what's interesting is what's gotten me through some hard, hard times is I pray. But there was one person, my trusted companion, who I've wanted to thank. It was that individual that got me through to knock on those doors. When I didn't have a whole lot to offer, but just passion and the spirit to learn. And that has gotten me through the tough times. And that is God. It's hard to get through that and not pray because I wanted to keep it a secret, but he knows. <laughs> and lastly, I can't tell you how many times, you know, on this floor we thank each other all the time. We do proclamations for people, which is it's important to do that. But tonight I want to recognize, and I know you guys have come across this, I will be at the most unusual place. I think the mayor is even referenced to being in a grocery store. And people come up to you and they say, hey, I watched you last night. Or, hey, I knew this. I am just, I'm just stopped in my tracks in awe of individuals like, I have not even formally met this woman, March. But I tell you what, she's probably been at more committees than I have. Individuals like Asher Heidemann, a horseman student 
who knows probably more about politics in Sheboygan than a lot of other citizens. Milton Storm. Oh, he was here earlier tonight. These people serve this community and never get a thank you. And it's those individuals that have taught me the greatest lesson. They never get thank you, but they serve and they continue to serve. And Sheboygan, I thank you because I am a much better person and I've learned so much. Thank you. Vice President Hanna, I need a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Stand adjourned.